I'm a former visa officer, and what are the most common reasons that a visa gets refused? Well, if we're talking about 214B, and I think we should because it's the most important one, then there's one reason why 214B gets applied, and that's because the visa officer does not believe that you are going to use the visa the way that it is intended to be used. There are other types of refusals out there, what we call hard ineligibilities. This could be because you've been convicted of a crime. This could be because you've overstayed in the US. There are a number of them and they're gonna have different codes, uh, 2A1, 9B2, 6C1, these types of, of codes, but they're much less common than the 214B that you see everywhere, which is really the judgment call. Every visa officer, every consular officer around the world is empowered to use this 214B refusal with most of the non-immigrant visas, all except H1B and L1 visas, whenever they think that the person that's in front of them should not get the visa. Now, the text of that refusal notice that they're going to hand you, if they refuse you with 214B, is going to talk about ties. You have not demonstrated ties to your country. Now, while this is the way that it is worded precisely in their regulations, they're using it more broadly than that. What they really are saying is they just don't believe that you're going to use the visa in the correct way. It's not specifically that these ties were not demonstrated. It's more general than that. Now, why would they use this? Why would they use this 214B refusal code? Well, there's going to be two instances. One is going to be when they don't have enough positive information in order to justify issuing the visa. And two, it's going to be when you've presented some type of negative information that hurts your application and you haven't presented some other information to counter that or explained it in a way that doesn't make it seem so negative. Okay, so let's talk about that first scenario where you've not presented any good information. The visa officer is writing notes. That's why when you've, if you've been to a visa interview, you know that most of the time the visa officer looks like this. Okay, what's your purpose of travel to the US? They're not looking at you. They're looking at their computer monitor. They're in their system. They're reviewing your DS-160 and they're typing notes. They're typing notes about what you say. Don't think that they're not listening to you. They are absolutely listening to everything that you're saying to them. And they're looking at it through the eyes of a detective trying to discern, okay, is this a person who is going to get a visa or not? Are they presenting information that confirms a visa issuance or a visa refusal, okay? Now, they need to write in their notes why they're making the decision that they're making. So think about this in any other context. If someone's making decisions and they have superiors, they have managers, they have bosses, and they know that their bosses want them to be making correct decisions and they're justifying why they've done it. Why did I choose A over B? Why did I choose one instead of two? They want to be able to justify those decisions and say, well, this is the reason. This is solid evidence that I had and what influenced my decision and why I chose this instead of that. The visa officers are doing the same thing. They're saying A, B, and C are the reasons why I say this person should get their visa. Or they're saying uh, one, two, and three are the reasons why I am refusing this visa. Okay, so if you don't have those good A, B, and C points that you've presented, the visa officer has no positive information that they've gotten either from your answers or from reviewing your DS-160, then they're not going to have any ammunition to put in their notes to justify issuing you a visa. The default in a visa interview is a refusal. You have to earn your way up to an issuance by convincing the visa officer that you have the credentials. How are you going to do that? You're going to present those highlights. That A, B, and C, those highlights that you want to be in the notes that justifies your issuance, unless you give those to the visa officer, they're not going to have them. They're not guaranteed to be able to pick those out of your DS-160, to piece together why you're actually a strong applicant. You need to tell them directly and explicitly. Now, another situation may be that the visa officer is going to say, well, I noticed that there's a negative, but even though there's a negative, an obvious negative, I find other positives that counterbalance that. And in the end, I make the decision to issue the visa. That is situation two that I talked about, which is when you've presented something negative and haven't done anything to fix that situation, to counter that negative in the eyes of the visa officer. So let's say a very common example of that would be having a family member in the US. Okay, well, it's on your DS-160. Yes, your sister is in the US. At the interview, the visa officer asks you, oh, you've got a sister in the US? You just say, yes. Okay, what's she doing there? She's married. Having someone in the US, usually without any other information, 
is going to be interpreted as a negative. So you need to immediately turn that into a positive. Yes, my sister's in the US. She went to the US originally as a student. She got her master's degree at Carnegie Mellon. And then she got married to a US citizen and uh, she has her, her green card right now, okay? There is where you've taken something that was potentially negative and you've flipped it around to being a positive. So the visa officer in their notes, they're going to be able to say, yes, I noticed that they have a relative in the US, but this is why that shouldn't be taken as a negative, all right? You're helping them. You're giving them the ABC, the points that they need in order to be able to justify to anyone who would review this decision, they're able to justify why they made it, okay? So the most common reasons why you're going to be refused out of all the ineligibilities, 214B is just the judgment call. It means the visa officer can make whatever decision that they want. If they want to refuse you, they can. And when they're applying 214B, the number one reason is because you haven't presented any positive supporting evidence that merits you getting the visa issued. And the second reason would be that you've presented something negative or there's something negative in your application and you didn't do anything to counter that. Now keep this in mind when you're preparing for your visa interview. If you keep this in mind, you can go and you can be prepared to present your highlights. You can also be prepared to counter any of these negatives, these hurdles, your highlights and your hurdles. These are what to focus on because it's that first pitch where you're going to give that visa officer the A, B, or C. Maybe it's the A, B, but even though C, but also D, whatever it's going to be, it's going to be different for everyone. You're going to need to be able to put together that pitch, almost like a salesperson, to present yourself to the visa officer and make them feel confident that they are making the right decision by issuing you your visa. That's how you're going to get your visa issued.